Welcome back, everybody, to episode three of Photography Tips and Tricks, the show for all you photographers out there. We're talking about gear, tips, tricks, techniques, all sorts of inspiration to get you guys out there making beautiful images. Now, the concept of grip is something that's very, very important in photography. It's all of the things, stands, cables, flags, and all of the things that you would use inside of a studio. There's no better person out there to cover all of this stuff than Mr. Brad Moore. This was a great hit on D-Town TV, and it's something that we want to continue doing here at TNT. He's got a tip for us today on cable wrangling. Take a look at this. Hi everyone, Brad Moore here with another Grip Tips. Today we're gonna to be talking about cable management. So, you know, whenever you get done with a shoot and you're, you know, you're getting ready to pack everything up, you grab the cables and you normally kind of do this thing where you just wrap it around your elbow and your hand to kind of get it wrapped up quickly. But then, you see how kind of wonky that looks? It, it just doesn't look good, it doesn't really form together well. Plus, whenever you do that, you add tension to the cable that can cause the fibers and stuff inside to snap. So, I've been taught the proper way to do this is called cable rolling. And if you notice, every cable generally has kind of a natural curl to it that will form this nice little circle here. So whenever you're rolling a cable, you wanna take your finger and thumb and kind of twist the cable and it'll naturally just kind of roll up very nicely and neatly. It might take a little while to get used to doing this if you're not used to doing it. And even the, t the cable may take a little training, especially if it's used to being rolled the incorrect way. So there, now it's all nice and neat. Plus, bonus tip, this is a cable tie. It's just a piece of Velcro that's, you know, fuzzy on one side and grippy on the other side. And so you can take and loop this around one end of the cable. Just stick it through. You can also use rubber bands for, the, for this, but personally, sorry, I like the uh, Velcro. This one is actually made, from, uh, made by Kino Flow, and you can get a pack of 20 for about, I think, 18 or 19 bucks on B&H. So you get it kind of gripped around there. And then once it's on, you don't have to take that off. And then you just loop that around, get it all nice and tidy there. And there you've got your cable ready to pack. It's a little more manageable, a little smaller, rather than having the big loop and twisted and all that stuff. So that is cable management, and that's it for Grip Tips today. Thanks. Thanks so much, Brad. Hey, listen, if you want to follow more of Brad's stuff, make sure you go to bemorevisuals.com or catch them on other episodes here in Photography TNT. And let's take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to be wearing a vest from the vest guy. We've got modeling tips from Ms. Lindsay Adler. i got a website for you to take a look at and your contest. It's all right here on Photo TNT. When bad weather strikes, and threatens your next outdoor shoot, you need the experience. The experience of a photographer that can handle any situation. Get your hair out of your eyes! Come on! The experience of Joe McNally. Bad weather doesn't mean you can turn in a bad shoot. It's really bad weather out here, Harry! I'm not gonna leave this dock without a picture. Trust Joe to teach you the tips you'll need to capture stunning photos even when the weather turns ugly. Anybody there see the sun? I don't. Don't let bad weather ruin your next I'm happy again. <laughs> what am I supposed to out here? Sing a chorus of I feel pretty? Don't let bad weather ruin your next photo shoot. Telling people what is perfectly obvious that the weather sucks. Rely on Joe McNally to help you weather the storm. <laughs> the miracle of photography visits us again. We are Learn how to take great photos in bad weather. Watch Joe McNally. Yeah. Whoa, was, it, was that the same cow? Welcome back everybody to Photographer TNT. My name is RC and yeah, I did it. I'm wearing a vest. I'd always wanted to get a photography vest and I hadn't done so for a while. And I found this place called thevestguy.com. And he makes vests for all sorts of different industries. And he also started making some for the photography industry. Now, 
why would you want a vest? Well, there's times where you don't have access to all of your gear, and your gear would be sitting in a rolling bag or sitting in a book bag, and you don't want to kind of dig back and forth, right? Think safari, think press, think that workshop where you need to have everything with you, and you want to be able to carry it comfortably. So this is their Urban Series, right? And I'm carrying my D3S with my 2470. Ooh, yeah, see? Bet you thought that wasn't gonna happen. But there's tons of different pockets that are available to this. And I have access to my camera, right? So my camera can just kind of hang out right there. And it keeps a ton of different things. So like, if I were to take a look in this one area, right? 70 to 200, 2.8 Nikon, not bad. And still has tons of room in there. So if I wanted to put more things in there, I totally could, right? So take a look at that, right? It's just sitting right there. And I think that that's one of the things that I thought was wonderful. It even has a front pocket on top of this where you can go ahead and put documents. So I think that's great. You got a document pocket that sits right here. You got another pocket right here on this side with a front. Let's go ahead and take a look. A little surprise at what's in here. Oh. No, no big, just a little D600 sitting right there. Take a look, inside pocket right there. Now, that has all of this stuff here. I have inside of this pocket, two flashes shoved right in there, right? One, two, not bad, not bad at all. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look here on this side. What do I have? I have a lens thrown right in there. So that's what you want this for. You want to be able to carry all of this information, all of this gear in one spot. I could even take this off and show you that there's pockets inside of here, there's pockets inside of here. There's all sorts of different places for you to carry all of your gear. It gets a little heavy, so if you have a nice handle in the back, this becomes your carry bag. You just kind of throw this over your shoulder, and at any point in time, all the gear you need is right when you need it. Make sure you take a look at thevestguy.com. I'm very happy with this one. Now, we have a modeling tip from Miss Lindsay Adler. This is something that you're not gonna wanna miss. Take a look. There's a couple tricks to posing a model or your subject as well that can be more flattering for them. And it's based off that same idea of whatever is closest to the camera is going to appear larger or whatever is further from the camera is going to appear smaller. So for example, stand evenly on both feet, completely evenly. Usually that's not as flattering. It's, it's kind of, you know, square feet, uh, you know, square hips. It's just, there's no weight moving around. One way if you want to make somebody look more slender is you can pull the hips and the waist back. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have the subject put one leg back and they put their weight onto that back foot. So for example, I'm gonna have you do that. Yep, and same thing, and then just lean back again. So when she puts the weight on her back foot, if you watch, it's moving her waist back. Have you bring your chest forward just a little. And so what that does is it basically takes the, the hips and the waist and it reduces them because it's pulling it away from the camera. So that's a great way to make somebody look more slender. Particularly if you're photographing someone who is heavy, that's something you would want to do, is kind of just pull the midsection back and the chest forward, and it's going to make them look more slender. So let me show you a before and after picture. Do one that's really even, even legs, just straight forward. Okay, and I'm gonna get down just a little bit, and right there. Okay, now put one foot back, and put your weight on your back foot, and then chest forward. Good, perfect. If you shoot a uh, more glamour or boudoir photography, keep the same tip in mind. Everything that I've been saying here, whatever's closest to the camera is going to look larger, whatever's furthest from the camera is going to look smaller. So if you think in that same mindset, if you're trying to emphasize basically the butt or the chest, put that closer to the camera. That's going to emphasize it. That's not just distance, but also angle. So for example, face me straight on. If I do a portrait like this, it's you know, not too flattering, it's just kind of everything's evenly emphasized. But if you turn around, and if I get at a lower angle, so basically I'm putting my camera now more down the angle towards her waist. And if you kind of just put but a little bit closer this way, that's going to be emphasized, it's really obvious. So if I get down lower, it becomes clear what your eye is meant to be focusing on. So if I take this into the realm of fashion photography, if I want to be looking at the shoes, if I'm trying to emphasize the shoes, I'm going to get at a lower angle and then be closer to the feet. Same thing, if I'm meant to be looking at the jewelry, I'm going to get maybe at a higher angle and be closer to the jewelry because whatever the camera is closest to is what it's going to emphasize, it's going to be largest. So just think about this in anything that you do, whether it's portrait, whatever, whether it's fashion. If you look at the subject, 
figure out what you really don't want to draw attention to. Move it away from the camera. Figure out what you do want to draw attention to and bring it closer. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Hey, listen, let's go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, I got a website I want you to take a look at, a deal and a contest, all right here on Photography Tips and Tricks. Hey folks, Moose here. A little birdie told me you want to learn wildlife photography. We're gonna talk about everything from the basics. How do you find critters? What brings them in? I'm gonna cram in more biology in this program than you could probably imagine. Because when I mean, you take that biology and combine it with that technology, the camera stuff, you come back with great images. What works for background, works for exposure. The incredible, most important secret, the perch. We're gonna talk about camera settings. We're gonna talk about flash settings. We're gonna talk about camera placement. We're gonna talk about short lenses, long lenses. I'm gonna help you incorporate it to wherever you live be it in the middle of an island, in the mountains, the desert. Yep, I'm gonna invite you to come to my home, my office, spend some time, learn some of my friends and neighbors how to take the best portrait of them possible. This is an exclusive you're gonna see only on Kelby Training, so come along into the great jungle of my backyard. Welcome back to Photo TNT. My name is RC. Now, I've got a website for you to take a look at. This is the website that I go to every day. It has quickly become the news source for all things photography, and that's fstoppers.com. fstoppers.com is a great place. It's run by Patrick Hall, Lee Morris, and a ton of other contributors that are out there, including Kelby Training's own Douglas Saunders. Now, congratulations, Douglas, for that. But this is a place where you can find tons of different news articles and insights in the world of digital photography. So it's fast becoming the place where everybody goes and you should go to. Make sure you take a look at them over at fstoppers.com. Now, From Oz to Canvas is the new book from Vincent Versace. This is $26.99, 40% off thanks to the folks over at Peach Pit. What you need to do is you need to go to peachpit.com forward slash Kelby TV and enter in the code Kelby TV. This is only for you guys. So if you want to get 40% off on almost every black and white creation known to man in one book by Mr. Versace, this is where you're gonna do it. Now, it's contest time. Do you want to win one of these rogue gels? This is a universal lighting filter kit that basically lets you put different color gels, right? Easy to use, categorized, all set up for you on your hot shoe flash. If you want to win this, this is what you're going to do. Go to kelbytv.com forward slash contest. At the contest section, you can go ahead and select the show that you're watching. Obviously, you're watching tips and tricks. You're going to put in your name, your email, your website if you have one. We might want to show it off and tell us something about the show. Maybe send us an idea. Guys, this is your show for you to do that. So leave that there and our producer is going to pick one winner and one of you guys is going to win this. Thank you so much, guys, for stopping by, though. We're really, really excited about the new show, and we hope you are, too. Make sure you tune in next week for more photography tips and tricks. My name is RC. I'll see you next week.